proud of our community being able to do this. Yeah. Oh yes, history. Four thirty p.m. West week, West time and seven thirty Eastern time. You guys tune in to the live stream. Oh, I get to see you. How you been? Say hi, Amber. Hey. This is my I, very didn't, I didn't even mean. I didn't know it was on me, so I didn't mean to look up. Right. Do all that. Amber thinks she's LL Cool J, and that's fine. <laughs> I meant to have it prepared already before the camera came on me, like just now. We'll have the chance to watch a presidential town hall televised by a national cable network where the LGBT community is in the driver's seat. <laughs> to stand up and say we affirm the rights and dignities, and those are not just words of all Americans. We're gonna do those in actions from the Department of Education, the Department of Justice. We will stand up. But Booker over there, I don't know. <laughs> I think he might slide into your DMs a little later. <laughs> What is my uh, what one minute pack? One routine. minute, please take your seat. This is one a gay minute. audience. <laughs> I've been in front of a lot of crowds. I've never been asked my skincare routine. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a skincare routine, but uh, I guess I should. I'm 52. I probably this is about the time. Uh, I'm translucent, so I absorb light. <laughs> I didn't even know, but I yeah. Thursday Nick, lesbian event. You're now Every my video, yeah, yeah, you should come sometime too. I'll be see you Sunday. Wait, Lambda Legal One minute back. One minute. I don't even know about that. Oh, Lambda Legal Please Women's make your way to your Sunday. Seat. One minute back. Oh, thank you. I'm going to book her right now. I do a Thursday night. Yeah. Take my card. They're doing 30 seconds and they're going to kill me. I'll yeah. come back. Yeah, yeah. it's Thursday. Yeah, I've done. I've done. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, Robbie Goldman, PhD student. What? Rob, what's your question? Yeah, she's a rock star. Thank you so much. Yeah, she's it. a rock star. I never would have imagined that we would be doing a town hall on national television about LGBTQ issues. So this is something to celebrate and be proud of. We will always have this. Remember, we got all the letters covered. We've got LGBTQIA and CNN. Don't forget that. So let's have some fun. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Really appreciate it. Come here. No, no, I just want to ask you something. Come here. Tell me. Come here. I want you to talk. What's your name? I'm Blossom Seabrook. Blossom, let me ask you. Blossom, let me tell you something. The reason that we're here is to validate people like you. That is why we're giving, but that is why we're here. Okay. But I. Not one black trans woman has taken the mic tonight. Not one black trans man has taken the mic tonight. Hang on. We can't hear you. Blossom, we can't hear you. Here. Blossom, we can't hear you. Baby, your actions 
actions have to speak louder than words because guess what? Not one black trans woman has taken the mic tonight. You're... Not one black trans man has taken the, black, uh, the mic tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Show me. You blossom. Show me. Blossom. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Blossom, you're a black trans woman. You have the mic in your hand. I've given, I've taken it and given it back to you. We want to hear from you. We have had trans people of color. We've had all people here, and you're welcome. And, but we, but we are proud and happy that you're here. We're proud and happy that you're here. Yes, but remember, we, we're on our time constraint. All right, thank you, Blossom, and I appreciate it. Yeah, that's how anti-blackness works amongst people of color. That's what anti-blackness looks like. The erasure of black trans people. All right. I'm here, we're here in this room. Please give us that opportunity. Blossom, thank you so much. Thank you, Blossom. Thank you, Blossom. Thank you, Blossom. So, this has been an emotionally jarring experience. I thought it was going to be a boring debate. Amber brought me to a wrestling match. That's fine. Um, the beauty of this is that black and brown people and trans people demanded to be heard. Um, and I'm very proud of everyone who spoke up. But you can tell a lot of the white gays were confused. It must be nice to have the luxury. I know, because there still is some uh, privilege there. You know what I'm a lot of privilege there. Because even the people of color who didn't know what was happening was, was, was still instinctively on their side. Yeah, just up. Uh, so we feel no matter. It's easier to all right, so today we are here at HRC and CNN's historic town hall. There are nine Democratic presidential candidates that um, have been talking to the LGBTQ community and our allies. And the first mistake that happened, even though we think this is a wonderful thing to do, is that um, Ashley Marie Preston, who is a trans activist, was supposed to be one of the people who was asking a question. Um, a lot of black trans women have been murdered this year, 20, 20, 20 so 20. far. Um, hopefully there's no, not any more. And when she was told that she could not ask her question, that immediately created a space of erasure. Yeah. And there were no black or brown trans women who were empowered to speak up, even though that's the pink elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. As a result, there was a lot of protests. Um, there was demonstrations happening. Um, there were varying degrees of understanding in the crowd, but it got very emotional. We, we cried a couple times. Well, the first issue is that when Pete was speaking, and it was during his time, there yeah. was a protest. And it yeah. was a, just a, a protest with a couple trans um, people just wanting to come up and raise the issue that this is a problem that needs to be addressed. Yep. And then security aggressively handled them to the point where even Anderson Cooper, who was on the stage with Pete and interviewing told him, them to stop. told them to calm down and stop and stop and don't treat him like that to the point where um, a trans person was pushed onto the ground and aggressively pulled out now we are had too many cases of that and yep. last month in downtown LA where we were for downtown pride this happened with three three trans people getting drugged out by their neck at a restaurant that's horrible in near in during pride during so pride this shouldn't happen especially at, at a presidential town hall that is speaking about LGBTQ civil rights issues they were ag too aggressive with them which left everybody distracted and wanting to know the rest of the time because now you know we wanted to know what was going to happen and of course everybody's on edge after that right and as a black woman watching a black trans sister being dragged to the ground by security we are at an hrc co-sponsored event the fact that there was not any bias training about how to deal with stuff like that with mm -hmm. security is a blind spot that i'm yeah. praying that the hrc addresses moving forward yeah. um once it happened the first time and security was told not to do it again i will say they were better moving forward but they didn't address the issue but they didn't address the they issue didn't address it, but you know who so did address the issue though the, it left Blossom. Of course. Blossom it answer. Everybody in the audience upset. A yes. lot of trans activists actually got up and left. Some left to make sure that those India those Moore trans, left to go. Yeah, tra people were okay. First of all, can we do a shout out to India Moore shout because she could have been sitting in VIP, being a celebrity, being above it all. She and her sorry pronouns matter. Somebody just told me that India's pronouns are they. They. So let's use they. Mm -hmm. They're, they actually cared enough to go outside and check on the demonstrators. Mm -hmm. And that's what community actually looks like. You yep. see one of your sisters being dragged to the ground by security, you go check on them. Yep. So they went and checked on them. And when India came back, we asked, we were like, is everybody okay? And then when they said that everybody's fine, I actually started crying. Right. Because up until that point, I was like, I hope they're not out there hurt mm -hmm. because it's supposed to be a safe space for everybody. Right. This just shows that LGBTQ is not a monolith, right? Mm -hmm. The T often gets forgotten, right. um, mishandled, and mistreated. and mm -hmm. Shout out to Blossom, who after that happened, took the mic, went rogue, and Don Lemon, funny enough, shout out to Don Lemon, who yeah. actually empowered Blossom and speak. gave Blossom the mic and said, you know what, we're going to let you speak because trans erasure we're is not okay. Sure you can be heard. And then the person that Blossom stole the mic from even was happy that Blossom did yes. that and said, you know what, and why Blossom did that is because 
this Stonewall was led by trans women of color, and yep. they are the ones constantly overlooked, being hurt, being um, just, just, and not protected in the way that they should. It's the so 50 year out. anniversary, and what have we learned? We still don't know how to treat black and brown trans women, and it's the 50 year anniversary of us like literally building a movement on their backs. It's mm -hmm. not okay. Yeah. I hope someone from the HRC sees this, mm -hmm. and we don't believe in dragging. We don't believe in cancel culture. We believe in accountability culture, right, yep. Amber? Yep. So we're hoping that we're holding the HRC and its first black president accountable to say, you know what, this is an opportunity to use what happened today to yep. do better. Do better. Do better. Um, we're going to go back inside and see Julian we Castro. Hope everybody watched and learned and got some information. Look out from both of us. We're yes. Gonna we're going to give it and register to, to vote. I'm going to say this to those vote. of you who think it's really cute not to vote because you think the system doesn't matter. If you've ever wondered what you would do in the civil rights movement in the 60s when Martin Luther King was alive, this is the civil rights movement of this generation. Whatever you're doing now is what you would have done then. So if you're doing nothing now, you would have done nothing then either. Yes. So check yourself, okay? History is happening right now. Bye, guys. So it's 10 o'clock at night. Um, I just got back from Amber's house after that really emotional day um we went back to her house to like decompress from all the stuff that we had seen this is actually the meal they had in the press room i actually haven't eaten all day it's 10 o'clock and i'm about to eat for the first time today because i've been working all day um but yeah this is gonna be my dinner because i'm too tired to cook anything i think this is like a sandwich this is my make america lgbtq again oh this is cute i guess and then we got some stickers, um, a soda, I guess to go with my drink, and some other stuff. This is all cute and all, but what happened today was seriously jarring. And, um, but it was also a learning, right? Like, I think everybody in the room uh, could feel how important what was happening was. And so I'm, I'm really happy that the HRC and CNN partnered on this because this was their sacrificial lamb moment, right? This was the day that they were gonna see how it went and learn about how to improve. And so I hope they're not discouraged and I hope that after what happened tonight, they go back to the drawing board, they assess what worked and what didn't, and then they literally sit down and figure out ways to do better by our community. And when I say our community, I do not just mean um, black people or the LGBT. I mean, anybody who's a decent human who is committed to making this world a better place. We need to be really, really mindful about how we treat each other, the language that we use and the spaces that we take up and who we erase in those spaces. Because one thing I will say is there's this thing where everybody's complaining, oh, we're too politically correct. We're too politically correct. Do you know what? If the whole world has been ignoring you for the entirety of your life, and that same world is asked to stop and think for an extra four seconds to figure out how to stop erasing you from the conversation, I think it's worth those four seconds to give marginalized groups back their humanity. So stop complaining that the world's too politically correct. That's nice that you have the luxury to say that, but there are people who are dying because the world isn't more politically correct. Like I'm sick of that fucking complaint. And on that note, I'm going to eat my goddamn salad and my sandwich and my cookie and my, my beverage and uh, probably sift through all my videos and do some journaling and take my ass to bed because tonight, um, good or bad, I guess we made history. Bye, y'all.